gonna be weird being in a, a, a road ballpark and explaining the ground rules. This is like one of those games where I just don't know. I just don't know what's going on. Alrighty, get your hands and stand and get on your feet and make some noise. What final time? Put your hands together for the Red Crew and your Aviators mascot, Hayes. What?
All right, good evening, everybody. We're live from Kokomo Min Municipal Stadium. There's only two teams left in the Prospect League, and one of them is the Butler Blue Sox, who are here tonight to take on the Lafayette Aviators. Quasi-neutral site, but not really. <laughs> but uh, with Lafayette hosting the Col Colt World Series, we're having a game here tonight. Game one of the Prospect League Championship Series. I'm Jaren Steele, joined tonight by Patrick Reddick. Pat, uh, well, this is pretty much uh, what you play all year, f all, you know, all summer for, is to get this opportunity to play for a championship. It is, Jaren. Blue Sox have been playing for nine years, and this is our first trip here, so exciting to see it after all this time. Uh, not quite sure what to do with my hands right now. <laughs> Well, uh, I tell you, I was nervous on Monday. I was nervous on Sunday. I can guarantee you I will be nervous again here tonight. But the Blue Sox will uh, go up against a right-hander here, here from uh, St. Joseph's College. A left-hander, I beg your pardon. 50-50 uh, shot at that. And uh, it's number 33, Jarrett Hamill. And uh, why don't you uh, run some numbers real quick on how he's done this summer. And well, as you mentioned, lefty out of St. Joseph's College. To just completed his freshman season. Appeared in 14 games this summer. This will be his fourth start. He had 35 two-thirds innings, 42 hits, allowed 19 walks, and struck out 23. He has not yet faced Butler to this point this year. And the first man he's going to face is Tanner Murphy, left fielder this evening. Steps into the box, and the first pitch from Hamill is a called strike. First pitch tonight, 7.06, and it's, what, 80 degrees and pretty pretty much perfect here in Kokomo. Couldn't be much better. Here's the 0-1. It's outside. The rest of the Blue Sox lineup, we got Paven Parks batting second. He's DHing and pitching tonight, followed by Calvin Scott, Ray Gonzalez, Brady Gulikowski, Patrick Ferguson, Damian Maglione, Justin Kirkpatrick, and Stefan Merconja. Uh, foul ball here, one, two. Defensively for Lafayette, Canern Shield is behind home plate. At first is Kennedy, Schrader's at second, Parks at third, Sharp is the shortstop, Beeman in left, McAllister in center, and Brittis is in right. Pitch high, evens the count at two apiece. Boy, this is, uh, this is fun stuff. This is quite a ballpark here in Kokomo. Uh, if you're going to ask for a, a place to move the game to, this is the place you'd want to have it moved to. And this ball is going to be fouled off out of play near the playground out there in the, uh, off of right field. It's the third, third year for Kokomo Municipal Stadium. Jack Rabbits joined a few years ago. Yeah, this is Lafayette's just their second year in the league. Co or Lafayette being the Kokomo's kind of sister city, just shy of an hour away. Good both, at, both positions right in the cent center of the prospect league. Good at bat by Murphy to start out here. Gets a full count. Gives the guys an opportunity to see Hamill, who the Blue Sox did not face in the se this season. Pitch low, ball four. Good start here. Lead off walk. Now here's Paven Parks, who's hit the ball extremely well in the playoffs. Homered on Monday. Also had a uh, double down in Beckley. Been a very, very good player for uh, Butler in his postseason. Now we get to see him on the hill tonight, too, which has been a treat most nights uh, that he's had that task. Yeah, the Blue Sox have seen that strategy employed against him a few times where the pitcher also DHs. If Paven does come out of the game as the pitcher tonight, he will remain in as the DH for the remainder of the game. So it's always good to have that, that bat in the lineup. Called strike to start it off. Umpires this evening, we, this pitch is outside. We got Ar August Farwig behind home plate. Gary Harrell is the first base umpire, and Anthony Turk is working third base, but he's currently sitting in the middle of the infield. Or standing, I guess. 1-1, one, one, outside as well. We got a perfect view here, right behind home plate. You know, you just get to see all the pitches, all the movement. Kelly Automotive Park, I'm halfway up the first base line. So this is this is a treat to be right behind home plate. Here's the 2-1. Dual check swing, rule the ball. Looked like it was right on the belt. Tough tough pitch for Paven, but now he's just got to reset here in a 2-2 count. See if Murphy decides to take off here. 
He's going to stay put. Parks is going to strike out on what looked like a breaking ball for the first out here this evening. Bringing Calvin Scott, and Scott's leading the league in on-base percentage, 428 mark on the season. 44 hits and 44 runs scored this year. He's also been really good in the playoffs. He had four straight singles down in Beckley. He's going to chop one to third base. The only play is going to be to first. Parks across the diamond to Kennedy. 5-3 put out, and there are two outs here in the first inning. That ball was so, so slowly hit that they really didn't have a chance to turn two. Yeah, good play there by Parks. Get the shore out. We'll bring up Ray Gonzalez. Catching this evening from the University of North Florida. In fact, his former pitching coach is the head coach of uh, the Aviators, Brent McNeil. So they know each other pretty well. Hamill so far just allowed that leadoff walk. Check of second. Here's the pitch. It's outside. Doesn't look like he has a super amount of velocity. He's, I don't know, probably low 80s. Yeah, neither Hamill or, or Parks, who will be pitching for Butler tonight, had a, a ton of either strikeouts or walks. I expect to see a lot of balls in play here tonight. Here's the 1-0. Gonzalez foul tips it. Another thing about Hamill is he really didn't start much with Lafayette this summer. I believe he said only three starts. So he might be a guy that you, you get through the lineup a couple of times, you get that third look at him. Foul ball here by Gonzalez out of the stadium. Again, that, that's another similarity to, to, to Pavin, who had just three starts himself this season. So, you know, when you get to playoff time, it's kind of all hands on deck in terms of pitching. Yeah, Pavin started a lot more last summer for Butler. But after a long college season, they decided to uh, use him more out of the bullpen. And he's been an effective hitter, too, so it's hard to take that bat out of the lineup. But tonight they decided to go with both. For the first time this year, we'll go National League. One, two, two outs, and a runner at second. Here's the pitch. It's outside. Looks like uh, fastballs he's working away a lot. Really hasn't tried to jam anybody inside. Whenever you don't have a ton of velocity, you kind of try to live on that outside edge. Here's the 2-2. Outside and high, and now full count. Of course, Butler managed by Cody Harold, who's down at third base here, and Josh Forbes, the assistant at first. Done a great job in their first year as a tandem. Getting this team to a championship series. Here's the payoff. Hit well, but foul, and out of play. Both of them hired just two weeks before the season started. I'm not sure anybody expected uh, quite the season that we've had. Not that anybody ever expects to make the championship, but. Unless, yeah, you're right, but it's uh, been quite the fun ride we've had here this summer. Good battle for Ray. Here's the 3-2 again. Oh, he's going to line it up the middle. Is it going to hold up? No, it's not. It's going to fall in front of the center fielder, McAllister. In the score is Murphy. RBI single for Ray Gonzalez, and the Sox are on the board. They lead 1-0. Tanner Murphy going on that pitch. Easily jogs home there on the Ray Gonzalez. Line drive to center. And the Sox are on the board. Yeah, great start. Ball line to center field. I thought for a second it was going to hold up for McAllister, but fell about two feet in front of him. Now Gulikowski at the plate. He'll take a called strike. Lafayette has a guy warming in the bullpen. I can't believe that this early. Number 30-something. I guess it is a championship series, but... Uh, yeah, you're certainly you're, not going to mess around. But if you're him, if you're looking over your shoulder at the bullpen already, that's got to be a little unnerving. Yeah, well, he's had 14 appearances, 35 innings, so he's not going super long in games. 37, that is. Let's get a 
name to that number. Jeff Peterson. Yeah. He came in against us. A foul ball down the first baseline. 2-2 count on Brady Golikowski. Boy, he had a big game in Beckley. Back-to-back -back doubles, two-run double in that win. Two, two, two outs, and Ray Gonzalez at first base. one nothing Butler here early on. A little flare. Up the middle, base hit. That's a good two-strike approach. Just finds a hole right over top of second base, and now there are two men on for the Blue Sox, and two outs, and an opportunity for Patrick Ferguson to give the Butler Blue Sox an early uh, cushion. Yeah, we've, we've Said it a number of times this year, but it seems to be a theme for the Blue Sox. Aren't afraid when they get two outs. They put up a ton of of runs with two outs, stringing together multiple hits. All right, Ferguson. Ready to go here. Peterson's still getting hot out there. Here's the pitch. Fouled straight back. 3.30 down that right field line. I'd like to see Patrick tuck one in there. Ferguson has been slumping a bit as of late, but of course set the uh, Blue Sox single season record for home runs. Led the prospect league in home runs this year. No one outside. Here's the pitch. It is outside and low. So, good count here for Ferguson, 2-1. This is one where you probably expect to see a fastball. Here it is. It's outside as well. He's hitting the same spot. He's not getting the call. It's off the plate about three or four inches. And now it's three and one. Yeah, Ferguson, of course, has also struggled a bit with strikeouts this year, but he's he's done a good job. He did a good job down in West Virginia. You know, moved a couple runners over, put the ball in play, which is really what you got to do. Well, you're going to draw, draw a walk here. He draws a walk. And now the bases are juiced for Butler in the first. And Damian Maglione coming to the plate. Hamill this inning. Walk, strikeout, ground out, RBI single, single walk. And here comes Brent McNeil out of the dugout here early to have a quick word. Looks like Peterson's done throwing, so he would look like he would be ready if they need him. Interesting things for Pavin is he hit this inning, so he got to throw his bullpen early. Normally right now is whenever... Butler started to be warming up, but with him having to hit, he's almost, uh, he's already hot, ready to go, but it's gotten to the point where it's been a, such a long inning that you, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go back up there and throw a little bit. Yeah, this is what you want to do if you're Butler here. Just jump on him early. As you said, maybe get to the bullpen. So, of course, these guys are thinking, you know, you've got to play again on Saturday. You don't want to burn through too many of your pitchers. You only have one day off in between for the travel day. Here's Damian Maglione after the mound visit is finished. Hamill gets the sign, and here's the pitch. Oh, nice one. Started off. Looked like he took something off and gets a strike right down the, pretty much right down Broadway. Here's the 0-1. Maglione fouls it off. Maglione steps in with 303 on base percentage this year. 22 RBI. 35 hits. Showing a little bit of power with seven doubles, two triples, and a homer. Oh, two's high. Gonzalez at third. Uh, Gulkowski at second. Ferguson at first. And at the plate, Damian Maglione, the one-two. Going to be lined into the gap. 
That's going to get down, and it's still going. Finally cut off by McAllister. In the scores. Gonzalez in the scores. Gulikowski Ferguson stops at third. And two RBI double for Damian Maglio. It's 3 0 Blue Sox here in the top of the first. Just rope that ball out into the left center field gap there. Makes it four consecutive batters there to reach base after the two outs. Three hits and a walk. And now with Ferguson on third and Maglion on second, still threatening here. Ground ball stopped by the shortstop. Throw to first, and Kirkpatrick's going to be safe. And in the scores, Ferguson, it's 4 nothing. Kirkpatrick just beat that one out. Sliding stop there. It's short by Sharp. Um, made a decent throw, but Kirkpatrick hustling down the line. That's why you always run those ones out. It's in there a step ahead, and Sox now lead a four to nothing. Maglione moves to third, and now Stefan Mercanja, the ninth man to hit this inning, will step in. Is Hamill laboring here early on? Here's the pitch. Oh, that ball hit the deep left field, and it is gone. A home run for Stefan Mercanja, and it is now seven nothing. Butler. Wow. Well, I don't know if we saw this coming, Pat, but we'll take it. I mean, when the first time the Butler was out and it played Lafayette, Lafayette came up, the first nine guys in a row reached base without getting an out. We said we'd never seen that before. Last week when Lafayette came to Butler, Butler did the same thing back to them. So, you know, these teams are capable of exploding. And uh, that's what just happened here in the first inning. Three-run homer. And now back to the top of the order, and Murphy, he'll take a strike. Bat, bat around in the first inning. Wow. <laughs> Pitch is called a strike. Looked like it might have been outside, but the way things are going for Hamill, he'll gladly take that call. I would have to think there were a lot of nerves in, the, in both dugouts before these games, but Blue Sox aren't showing it on the field here with their bats. Hard hit grounder fair. Down the left field line, that'll go all the way to the wall. Murphy's around first, and he'll be into second with a stand-up double. Wow. That's all you can say at this point. Your leadoff guy's on base for the second time in the top of the first. That's good news. 16 doubles for Murphy in the uh, regular season. He just ripped that one down the line. So how about Pavin? Starting pitcher gets the bat twice in the first inning. Before he takes the mound. Hopefully he doesn't wear himself out too much here. He swings and misses at a fastball to start it off here. And the crowd that has come to the game tonight, which is, uh, it's not full here, but they have to be stunned at this result here early on. I mean, Butler just, Jumping out here, Murphy takes off the throw down, and Murphy's going to be safe at third with a stolen base. Surprised that they would try to take third on that, but Murphy got a great jump, and the throw almost went out into left field. Blue Sox were more aggressive in terms of stolen bases than Lafayette. And that was That's actually the second time in this inning that Murphy has gone to attempt to steal third base, the first one he scored on. Blue Sox... Keep pushing it here. 1-1 one, one smoke to center field, but McAllister will make the catch. It was hit right at him, but they have, Hamill did not fool anybody in that first inning. So after all that, seven runs come in to score on six hits, no errors, and one man is left stranded at third. So we'll go to the bottom half of the first, give you the Lafayette batting order. Leading off will be number nine, Brian Sharp, followed by number 13, the DH, Cody Heffron. Then, or Corey Heffern, I beg your pardon. Then it'll be the th third baseman, number 15, Dougie Parks in the three-hole, followed by the left fielder, number seven, Logan Beeman. In the five spot will be number 25, the first baseman, Evan Kennedy. Then it'll be the right fielder, number three, Trey Brittis. Following him will be the center fielder, number eight, Jawan McAllister. The eight hitter will be number 20, the second baseman, Nick Schrader. And then it'll be the catcher, number 16, Ryan 
Naren Shield to finish off the lineup. And they'll go up against a right-hander from Seminole State College and now, and now Kent State University, Paven Parks, who is given a seven-run lead to start it off. Yeah, Parks, as we as we mentioned, uh, not has not started a lot of games this season. This will be just his fourth start as well. He's gone 40 innings, allowed 31 hits, 14 walks, and 26 strikeouts. So he's limiting the walks. He, he did have one appearance last week against Lafayette on 2.1 innings. Didn't allow a hit. Walked two, struck out two. Pretty brief uh, appearance in the Blue Sox final regular season game of the year when they beat the Aviators 15-10. to 10. A lot of fun stuff happening that day. Defensively for Butler, we got Ray Gonzalez behind the plate. Patrick Ferguson at first. Damian Magdalena is second. Brady Gulikowski is the third baseman. Justin Kirkpatrick will be at short. Tanner Murphy in left. Stefan Merkonja in center. Calvin Scott in right. And here's the left-handed hitting Brian Sharp to start us off here in the bottom half of the first inning. Parks' his first delivery is a fastball that's in there for a called strike. Here's the 0-1. That's going to miss outside. Here's the 1-1 one, one delivery. Hit right back to him, off of him, and that will allow Sharp to reach. That's a comebacker that really Parks was just trying to defend himself and it hit off his glove, and that allows Sharp to get a leadoff single here. Brings up Corey Heffern, the DH tonight. Sharp with a bit of a lead at first. Ferguson holding him on. And here's the pitch. It's going to be a called strike. Pretty good movement from Parks. Sharp just four stolen bases and six attempts for a leadoff guy this summer. He doesn't have much. Now well, he gets into a little bit of a bigger lead. Here's the pitch. Line foul down the left field line. Lafayette had a pretty good team at drawing walks this summer. They were an on-base um, machine. They had they, like five guys over 400. Yeah, and, and as a team, um, three the Blue Sox and, and Lafayette's average is almost identical, 272, 273. But the uh, those walks have really given ground ball to short Maglion for one on to first. That's a double play. Four, six, three. Good turn by Kirkpatrick, and wow, that's two quick outs. Just what the doctor ordered after, you know, that big top of the first. You get that double play ball and erase the lead runner, and now Dougie Parks will bat with nobody on. Yeah, you don't want the other team to let them right back into the game in the first inning and turn it into a slugfest. You want to, you know, establish your pitching, your defense early as well which is what the Blue Sox did on that double play. Pitch a bit high to Parks, who had a league-leading 22 doubles in the regular season. As we were speaking to, though, before the double play, the uh, Aviators with a 399 on base percentage, 30 points higher than what the Blue Sox had. Um, Blue Sox even that out with better pitching, but still this is a lineup that can certainly put up some runs if they need to. 1-1 one, one count on Parks after a foul ball off of Ray Gonzalez's mask. Here's the pitch. It's fouled out of the stadium, which is a little bit harder to do here in in um, Kokomo. Kokomo than it is in Butler. But what a facility this is. Voted the nicest summer league ballpark in the country last year, and you can see why all oh, called strike three to end the inning. And wow, what an inning it was for Butler. Seven runs come in in the top half. Paven Park shuts the door in the bottom half. We'll go to the second. It's 7 nothing, Butler.
top of the second here in Kokomo. Butler leading Lafayette 7-0 in game one of the Prospect League Championship Series. Kokomo, or Lafayette, defeated Terre Haute 7-0 in game three on Tuesday night to get into this. Of course, Butler swept West Virginia two games to none in two thrilling ball games. Pitch outside to Calvin Scott, makes the count 1-1. One, one. Those were two of the best ball games that we've ever seen. They were, yeah. In, in nine years, if you were going to argue, those are the two most exciting Blue Sox games. Oh, you, man. this ball certainly make that argument. Smoke to center field, and that's going to hit off the wall out there. Calvin Scott's around first, and he's into second with a double to lead off the second. Speaking of exciting, that ball hitting off the center field wall was pretty exciting. Scott pulled in in the second base easily. He almost thought at the end here he might have been stepping kind of gingerly, but he's seems okay there now. Yeah, he's been battling some sore ankles, but uh, nothing – like adrenaline to get you through the rest of the season. If you hit a ball that far, it's going to get you pumped up. Blue Sox, with that sweep of West Virginia, had two days off, the most days they've had off in a row all season since they started the yeah, this season here 72 days ago. Strike call here to Reagan's. All it's, you know, it's funny. With, um, Cody and Josh were both talking about how they were worried about that. And I thought back to whenever we went to Champion City, and we didn't take batting practice either day there, and it worked out pretty well. So, it, obviously, it hasn't hurt the Blue Sox here in the first inning tonight, uh, being able to have those couple of days off and really just kind of tee off on Hamill here early on. Seem to continue their batting practice right into the game, which is what you always want to happen. 0-2 count on Gonzalez from – here's – well, Scott's bouncing around out there. Here's the pitch. Hard liner. That's a fair ball down the left field line. Scott's around third, and he's going to come in to score. Gonzalez is going to second. The throw will not be in time to get him. A double for Gonzalez, an RBI double, and now it is Butler eight and Lafayette nothing. To lead off the inning with a double, what's the next best thing to do? Replace him at second with an RBI double. My goodness. The Blue Sox are rolling here early on, and now time's called, and out of the bullpen comes Brent, or out of the dugout comes Brent McNeil, and in the bullpen it looks like Jaboris Smith is going to come out and take the, take over for Hamill, who's going to be done after one plus. Yeah. Javoris Smith from Alcorn State, a junior from Columbia, Mississippi. Will be tabbed to try to slow this Blue Sox offense down. I believe that he pitched against us earlier this year in that last series. And he, he um, sported a pretty good fastball. Yeah, Smith was also used against Terre Haute in the, in the last round. Comes in 49 innings pitched on the year. Quite a bit for a uh, mainly a reliever. Five starts, but uh, 12 relief appearances. About 55 hits, 26 walks, 38 strikeouts. Uh, against Terre Haute on Monday, he went three and a third innings. Allowed one run on three hits, two walks, two strikeouts, and a 4-3 loss for the uh, Aviators against the Rex. Wow, so if you so far tonight. The only guy that hasn't reached base is the starting pitcher, Pavin Parks. He made two of the three outs in that first inning. But everybody else has already reached base. And and everybody else but Ferguson has a hit. Amazing. All those runs in the uh, top of the first earned as well. Uh, Lafayette had a few more errors in the Blue Sox this season. Thought that might be a factor here, but 
uh, Blue Sox haven't even given them the opportunity to make an error. No, they're smoking. They were smoking the ball off of him. We'll see if Smith can try to put a stop in the leak here. Kulikowski gets the ball out to left field, and that's going to hit off the wall out there. Around third and in the scores, Gonzalez, another double for the Blue Sox. It's 9 nothing. Kulikowski just keeps it rolling here. Three straight doubles in the inning. Wow. Welcome to the ball game, Jabora Smith. <laughs> the uh, fence here in, in Kokomo, probably the they have a, a, a series of uh, – Signs about as big as, as they are on the wall at Kelly Automotive Park, but then above that, another two, three feet of fencing before we get to the uh, the yellow line up there for a home run. Hit just uh, underneath that fencing. Now it's Patrick Ferguson's turn. First pitch Gulikowski saw there. He liked it. He liked it a lot. Ferguson swings through the fastball of Smith. Wow. 9 nothing Butler here in the top of the second. Nobody out. Ferguson swings through another fastball. If I remember correctly on Smith last time, he was pretty much just fastballs. Mix in a 58-footer every now and then. But he likes to throw gas. Here's the 0-2. Ferguson takes it inside, bounces off of Knernshield, but he holds uh, the runner at second because we really didn't get that far away from him. Kulikowski with a bit of a lead here. You want to stay aggressive here, um, but you don't want to be dumb about it. Probably good. That pitch, uh, well, he lost the handle on way outside from the beginning and stayed out there. So the book's closed on Hamill. He'll allow nine earned runs in one inning plus. On eight hits, two walks, just one strikeout. You got a strikeout of Parks, the second batter of the game, and then things, uh, things went downhill after that. 2-2 two -two to Ferg. And here's the pitch. He swings through it for strike three, and there's one away here in the second. I missed uh, Hamill's pitch count there before he came out of the game, but really I don't know if it was all that high. The Blue Sox not drawing the walks. They were doing a lot of hitting. The hit lasting that really got things going for the Blue Sox was Damian Maglione's two RBI double, and he'll be at the plate here with... One out, and then after that, you had Kirkpatrick beat out an infield single, then Merkonja with a three-run bomb. This ball is going to be hit into the gap. That's down, and Gulikowski is going to round third. The throw is coming home, and it is going to be late as in the scores. Gulikowski gets 10 nothing Butler. Maglione takes second on the throw. Unbelievable. This, yeah, is, this is the, reminiscent of the uh, Saturday, the Sunday ga Saturday game we played against them at the end of the season. Although we got all 10 in one inning that time, but very reminiscent to that night. I'm trying to come up with some analysis here to make myself <laughs> sound smart, but I, I, I'm speechless. This is, this is exactly what you want to do when you're, if you're the Blue Sox. Kirkpatrick takes a strike. So far, it's been see the ball, hit the ball, score runs. Pretty simple. Yeah, I, and that's a, a danger of, you know, you get, get into these playoffs, three-game series, which is not something that you encounter a lot during the regular season. Um, and everything is so huge, and you can, can kind of freak yourself out trying to look at the most minute details. But at the end of the day, it, it comes down to that, see the ball, hit the ball. Kirkpatrick takes a strike, one-two count. This is 10 hits in two and a third innings. 
Or one and a third innings, I beg your pardon. That's that's and two big hits there by Magley on his double two run double in the the first inning. When he came up for that, the Blue Sox just leading two to nothing. There's two outs. You know, Lafayette can get a ground ball there, get out of that inning. Not a lot of harm done, but the uh the floodgates just opened after that double there. One, two, hard hit ball, fair down the line, and that'll roll all the way to the wall in left field. In the score is Maglione, and in the second with another double is Kirkpatrick, making eleven nothing. Kirkpatrick, not only double, not only a stand up double there, he jogged six feet past the uh, past second base looking for three. Just Jeff shot after shot down the left field line here. They asked. Smith to come in and hemorrhage the bleeding, but unfortunately, it's it's he hasn't found the the bandage. It's still uh, batting practice for the Blue Sox here. Now Merconge is at the plate, and he will chop one foul. And it's not like these these hits are you know, weak. By any means, everybody's base hits uh, have it's, been it's, shots. It's, yeah, four doubles this inning. <laughs> and a single that, uh, was just as hard. So one count to Merconja after a pause by Smith. He'll get ready to go. Here's the pitch. It's a bouncer, and that will get by Kinnern Shield, and that will allow Kirkpatrick to move up to third. Wild, wild pitch for Smith. Gives the Blue Sox another base. So, wow. Murphy on deck. These people that drove from Lafayette to Kokomo are just got to be feeling like they, I can't. They can't believe what's yeah, going on here. They had a, a free bus. They actually ship people in. And line drive, fair ball down the right field line. In the scores, Kirkpatrick around first and digging for two is Merconja, and he'll stop there with another double. It's twelve nothing, Butler. Another shot, this time to right field, but still uh, just an absolute shot. Opposite field for Merconja. And we have a dozen. Wow. Eighth man to hit this inning, Tanner Murphy at the plate. And it's to the point now where if you're Lafayette, you don't, do you want to use any more arms? Yeah, that series this short, you know, you got to win two out of three, and it, it this is a, a tough choice for a, a manager to make this early in the first game. You just abandon this game and, uh, you know, play for play for Saturday, or you know, I mean, you. you and that, but the flip side of that is you're going into Butler. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people in Butler who'll have the home field advantage on Saturday night. Do you want to go into that, you know? Having it be a must-win game, I. It's hard for me to say, down twelve right now to get up. <laughs> well, so, somebody made a mistake here. There's, there's a lot going on. I'll tell you what. <laughs> One two count to Tanner Murphy, with Merconj out at second. He's halfway to a cycle already. He's homer in a double. Here's the pitch. Chop to first. Merconj will move to third. On the, stepping on the bag. Three and assisted is Kennedy. Two away here. Now we'll see if Parks can get on base to complete the uh, entire lineup. Even when the Blue Sox get out, still productive out, moving runners up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Parks did hit the ball hard to center field last time and just hung up for yeah. McAllister. It was a good catch running in for McAllister.
Here's the pitch. Fastball called a strike. The 0 1. High. That's a pretty good spot, though. Wind is blowing out here, but uh, that hasn't aided any of the hits. The, they've been strong, yeah, strong hits. Low line drives. Spark swings through that one. Yeah, the one bomb by Mercanja was a no doubter off the bat. One, two, two outs. Smith looking to finally get out of here, but first he doesn't like the sign he's getting, so he'll step off. Now I'll reset. And here's the one, two. Oh, almost hit him, but he's able to s just dance out of the way of that one. Two two Parks fouls it off to stay alive. Checking his bat now because it hit off the end. Fans trying to cheer on Smith here. Two two outside, way outside. Such a weird feeling, you know, with this championship game and for game one, and with the last two games that we played were just f nail biters most of the way. 3 2, f hit well, but foul. And out of Sam, we got a fan who misplayed it out there. <laughs> Thought he was going to get it, but they hit it the sidewalk, took a bad bounce. Yeah, it's not like Lafayette is, is a pushover either. The no. You know, these two teams met just four times this year, and Lafayette beat the Blue Sox three of those four, although t two were earlier in the season before Butler had a lot of their bullpen in. But, um, you know, they finished just a game apart. The Blue Sox beat the Aviators on the final day of the season and, and beat them by just one game over 60 games. So it's, uh, you know, it's a long game here. Blue Sox can't – certainly you're happy about what you've seen so far, but you can't – just uh, coast the rest of the way. You still got to keep at it. There's no 10 run rule in this league for a reason. Parks wasting some baseballs here. Doing a good job staying in at the plate. Extending this at bat. S still a full count. If he's able to reach, the Blue Sox will bat around for the second straight inning. Been at this 45 minutes, not even out of the top of the second inning yet. Round ball, fielded by Kennedy at first, and he'll take it to the bag himself. Three unassisted, Parks upset because, well, he's over, it's not his fault. He's over for three. He's hit the ball hard twice. Yes, yes. But if he could take that anger back to the mound, it would be a good thing because he is a pretty darn good pitcher. So through one and a half here, Butler up a dozen.
Bottom of the second here in Kokomo. Yeah, is leading off will be Logan Beeman for the Aviators. They have some work to do. They're down a dozen here. And Pavin Park's first pitch is going to miss inside and low. one -oh, ground ball up the middle. Maglione's going after it, but he's not going to get there. And it's a single to center field. That's how we started the first inning with Lafayette. Brings up Evan Kennedy. Yeah, both Beeman and Kennedy here, the 4-5 uh, hitters. Really, the 3-4-5 hitters, if you can include Parks in that, too. Very good uh, hitters on the season. Top three hitters for Lafayette. Kennedy steps in here with a 4.59 on base percentage. He's one of those guys. Actually, he's not. He's the odd man out in terms of the walks. Only 25 walks. Um, whereas Parks and, and Beeman have over 45 each. But uh, 27 RBIs for for Kennedy here, the first baseman tonight. Pitch outside. One ball, one strike to Kennedy, who was the guy who busted up our shutout with two outs in the ninth at home last Friday. This ball is lined, but it will go foul off the Purdue side. Yeah, Blue Sox really dominated that game on Friday against Lafayette. Um, the Aviators had just four hits that whole game, and two of them came with two outs in the ninth inning. One-two delivery from Paven Parks. Going to be hit to left field. Tanner Murphy coming in, makes the catch one away here in the second. Brings in Troy Brittis, the uh, right fielder tonight for the Aviators. Hitting 292 on the year, 401 on base percentage. Scored 44 runs. He said we left 62 hits. We left a dozen on base that night. We've we we put up a dozen Friday here night. today. Yeah. <laughs> it's for the opposite. And. That's yeah, amazing. Leaving guys on base, not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Usually the more guys you're leaving on, that means you're at least getting guys on, giving yourself a chance to, to score more runs. Last Friday they uh, didn't get those guys in. Seems like tonight they are. So it's all even and out. 2 -oh count here after a pitch just missed to Brittis. The cops are coming. Yeah, there's a streak right outside the uh, the right field. Right beyond the right field fence. Christian Webb in batting practice hit it out onto the street, almost took out an orange Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and a miss, good pitch from Pavin. A lot of movement started out in the middle of the zone and just tailed away. Here's the 2-2. Ground ball. Pass. Kulikowski. Diving attempt. Just couldn't quite get to it. And that's a one-out single to put two men on for McAllister. McAllister comes in and played 46 games for the Aviators this year. 327 on base. 244 average. Two home runs. 19 RBIs. Does have leading the team with five uh, sack flies. Fastball, foul tip, strike one. Not that he'll have an opportunity here. Just one sacrifice uh, bunt. Not that you're looking to do that now by 12. No, I think the bunt's off for the rest <laughs> of them. Well, for until they get it to about, you know, two or three runs if they're able to do that. Swing and a miss. McAllister way behind. Schrader on deck. One out and two men on. It's Beeman at second, Brittis at first.
Parks gets the sign he likes from Gonzalez and gets a called strike three for his second strikeout of the ball game, two away. Aviator's not very aggressive on the base pass, kind of hold back and uh, you know hit the ball, rely on their bats more. But uh, Beeman out there on second base is leading the team with 11 stolen bases. Although probably in this situation, this early, you know, you're going to need everything you can uh, to come back in this game. You don't probably don't want to risk it this early. Pass ball in there for a strike to Schrader. Yeah, you, at this point there is – I would not be stealing any bases because – he, the last thing you want to do down a dozen is get thrown out on the base pads. Go station to station. Ground ball foul, and now it's 0-2. And, Jake Stout out of the bullpen to go retrieve that ball. Giving it an honest effort. Blue Sox all up on the dugout right now. They just... Really excited. Pitch just missed. Lafayette up on the dugout too, but um, probably a little less bit, excited. A bit more subdued in yeah. the third base dugout. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Paven Parks gets back-to-back -back strikeouts to get out of the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors. Two men left stranded. We'll go to the third. Butler 12, Lafayette nothing. Calvin Scott's ready to go here in the top of the third. So is Smith. First pitch is going to miss. Butler 12, Lafayette nothing. 12 hits for the Blue Sox. Three for Lafayette, no errors on either side. Fastball called a strike. Calvin Scott with his third at bat and uh, just the fourth inning. One for two, double, scored a run the last inning here. He led off the last inning as well. 2-1 count now to Calvin. And he'll take a called strike. Calvin, University of Delaware. Led the league with 29 stolen bases this year. Set a new Blue Sox single season record. Also a walks record. Hard hit ball. That'll fall in in front of the left fielder Beeman for a base hit. Train just keeps on rolling here. Brings in Ray Gonzalez at a Single in the first, a double in the third. RBIs both times. See, he's halfway to a cycle. Gulikowski's halfway to a cycle. Maglione is. Kirkpatrick is. And Mercanji is. That's amazing. Don't see that in every day. And now Calvin Scott is as well. Pitch misses for a ball. Yeah, 
Here's the 1 0. It's way outside to the back stop, and now Calvin will jog it to second base on a wild pitch. Oh, my. Two O is high. Now the three O called a strike. Zolas drew twenty walks on the uh, season, one hundred sixty six plate appearances. Appeared in 41 games, catching most of the way. A few DH appearances here and there. 3-1, chopped up the middle, fielded by Sharp. The throw to first will get Gonzalez for the first out. Scott moves up to third. Now it's Gulikowski's turn. Gulikowski already scored two runs on the night. Single, double, RBI last inning. He's going to take outside here. Brady redshirted at NC State this year. I imagine with the summer he's had, he's going to be trying to get a starting job in the fall. That's a good pitch from Smith in there for a called strike. Yeah, this Blue Sox team this year, really a, a younger team. We've seen a lot. It doesn't seem to have made much of a difference. Um, a few juniors sprinkled in like Calvin and, and um, Connor Coward. Is it junior? Jamie Sotalski, this ball's roped out to left center. And making the catch is... The center fielder, McAllister, in the gap. They almost collided out there, him and Brittis, but that will allow Calvin Scott to come in to score. Sacrifice fly brings him in to make it now a baker's dozen. 13 nothing. Butler. Well, Ferguson's turn. Reached on a walk, scored a run, and struck out. Here's the pitch. Ferg takes low. Patrick's another one of them freshmen you were talking about. I think Magaloon is a sophomore. Ben Crew was a red shirt freshman. Murphy, freshman. Pitch outside, 2 0 to Ferguson. And uh, Eric Bolton was a freshman this year. Gonzalez, a junior. 2 0 count. Popped up. And that's out of the stadium. Pretty good fastball. I think Smith kind of hides the ball pretty well. He's kind of a long, lanky guy. Six foot one, 175 out of Alcorn State University. A full count with big Patrick Ferguson. Here's the 3 2. He'll swing through it for strike three. Actually, a foul tip. Still a strike three anyway. One run comes in for Butler on one hit. No errors and no one left stranded. Through two and a half, Butler 13 and Lafayette nothing.
Ryan Knurd Shield is going to lead off here for Lafayette in the bottom of the third inning. 13 nothing Butler. Foul ball straight back by Nurn Shield to start it. One of the harder names to say in the Prospect League. Here's the 01. Sophomore out of St. Louis, Eastern Illinois University. Jeez. Recent addition to, to Lafayette. He's appeared in just 10 games this year. A few Eastern Illinois guys for this team. Beeman and um, Parks, Dougie Parks, but also Eastern Illinois guys. 2-1 upcoming. Here's the pitch. It's grounded to second. Maglione's got it on about four hops. Throw to first in time. 4-3 put out for the first one here in the bottom of the third. Shortstop number nine, Brian Sharp. The yeah, kid announcing the names here. Uh, that one's a little bit easier than the first one. Here's Brian Sharp. I felt bad for him because I've been doing it too. <laughs> Try to get the Canern Shield's name correct. Sharp singled and then was put out on a double play in the first inning. Takes a strike here. And if you're paving now, Pat, it's just got to be, you know, you got that huge lead. You're just trying to pound the zone and get out of here as you know, fast as possible. There's a ground ball to shortstop. Kirkpatrick has it. Throw in plenty of time. Two away. Yeah, throw strikes. Um, you got good defense behind you. Let them help you out. You don't have to strike guys out. You don't have to... You know, pick at the corners. You got them. You got enough margin. You know, let, let them hit the ball, put it in play, and trust trust your defense here. Heffron, four six three double plays last time up. Ready to go here with two outs. Parks sets and delivers. Pretty nice curveball for a strike. Oof. Ground ball foul down the third baseline. Now it's quickly 0-2. That's exactly what you want. You get them pitches in there for strikes, force them to offer early, try to keep the pitch count down. Like Pat said, use the defense. It's 35 pitches here for Pavin so far. Two outs in the third. 0-2 popped up. That'll make it out of the stadium. Lafayette does have a pitcher loosening in the bullpen. Not sure the number. 28. Get a name on him. This ball's popped up. Kirkpatrick drifting over towards the line will make the catch for the final out. They don't have a 28. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. But we're going to go to the Fourth with Butler up 13 to nothing.
Damian Maglione, who's already had himself a night through two innings, leads off the top of the fourth with uh, Butler had 13 nothing. First offering from Smith is upstairs. If you're just joining us, Butler put up seven in the first, five in the second, and one in the third. Foul ball. There it comes. Look out. We have the window open here, Pat. Uh, you have to be alert. I didn't bring my glove. No. Ooh, pitch inside. Maglione able to lean out of the way. Two one line drive base hit out into left field. Maglione three for three, seeing the ball really well. Blue here Sox, tonight. Blue Sox seven eight nine hitters now seven for seven with three doubles and a home run. That's what you like to see out of the uh, bottom part of your line. No pressure on Justin Kirkpatrick <laughs> here, trying to keep that streak going. Here's pitch, it's in there for a strike. Justin came in, what, about two weeks left in the season? Yeah, he's appeared in 10 games. Yeah. Fit in really well. Played for uh, Terre Haute Rex last year. So he was familiar with the league. In fact, he played in the playoffs with Terre Haute last year. Or no, no, I'm sorry. No, they didn't make the playoffs. Uh, it was Quincy and Springfield last year. They were in the race at the end. But he's got an opportunity here, and he's made the most of it. Yeah, and seven hits and seven runs in those ten games. Kirkpatrick chases strike three. One down here in the fourth. Now it's Mercon's turn. Mercon's chops one foul. At that three run home run in the first inning, he had two home runs in regular season. One of them at Kelly Automotive Park, one of them in Champion City. Here's the 0-1 inside. Night of rest and relaxation has done the team pretty well here. <laughs> we got in yesterday about 6.30, went to dinner, then a nice comfortable Marriott's hotel. About an eight and a half hour bus ride if you include the stop for lunch. Yeah, about three movies worth. Took us to get out here. Ground ball. Fielded by Schrader. He's going to go to second. They'll get that one there on the first. And Merconja beats it out. Fielder's choice puts him on first with two outs. Surprised they went to second on that one. Yeah. Um, Schrader going to, to his left toward first base and then turned and spun. And managed to get the out there, but a bit risky. That brings up Tanner Murphy. He's a really, really good player for a freshman this year. Popped up. That's going to make it out of play. Lookout lands in an open seat. And that looks like a winner, folks. It's a luxury to take each and every battle on the concession stand and redeem it for a free hot dog. Didn't play the jingle, Pat. It's disappointing. Here's the 0-1. Murphy shatters a bat with a roller to third. Throw by Parks will end the inning. Got him on the handle. No runs for the first time tonight. Uh, one hit. No errors. One man left stranded. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Butler 13, Lafayette nothing. All right, there you go.
Dougie Parks versus Paven Parks here to start the bottom half of the fourth inning. First pitch is inside. 13-0 Butler. 14 hits for the Blue Sox. Three for Lafayette. And here's a little flare out the second. Maglione tracks it down, makes the catch for the first out. Bringing Beeman as the uh, one of three Lafayette hits on the single in the second. Was left standing at second base, though. Even a left fielder, also a good pitcher for Lafayette. Strike call here to Mimi. He threw five shutout innings against the Blue Sox back on uh, almost a week ago, last Friday. It's kind of interesting how that w schedule worked out this year. Both the top two teams in the league played a series uh, on the last two days of the season. Yeah, you usually you expect to see... You know, playing a lot of uh, teams in your division. That's what it seemed to be the last few years. It comes down at the end and you're playing head-to-head -head with a team that matters. This year, obviously, though, with the uh, five teams in each division, there was an interleague game every day. Just so happened to be in Butler on the final day. 2-2 two, two count here. And then, of course, Lafayette. Um, had to go out to Terre Haute and play. They won that game. We went down to West Virginia, won that game. Here's a line drive out into left field. Base hit, second one of the game for Beeman. And with one out, there's a runner on. Yeah, no off day. Um, after that last regular season game, next day we were in West Virginia. We drove back that night to play in Butler the next day. Lafayette was here in Kokomo on account of the... Uh, Colt World Series, which are still going on there, which is why we're in Kokomo. What's interesting this about that is tonight is the last night for the Colt World Series, so here's a line shot past Ferguson. That'll be a base hit. As Scott gets to it and gets it in pretty quickly. Runners on the corners with one out here. Beeman moves up to third. Anyway, what I was going to say was that that. Uh, the Cold World Series finished up tonight, so if we would have lost the home field advantage battle, they would have been able to play in Lafayette this weekend. So, turned out uh, to be a pretty good blessing for the Blue Sox. Not only did they get the home field advantage, but they get to travel to a team that's the closest possible yes, city. slightly closer. About 45 minutes to an hour between Kokomo and Lafayette. Britis singled his last time up. He's at the play. Lafayette looking to get on the board here. Here's the pitch from Parks. Ground ball to second. This could be two. On the second for one. On the first. Double play to end the inning. 4-6-3. And that will keep a run off the board. Wow. No runs. Two hits, no errors, and one man left stranded. Through four, Butler 13, Lafayette nothing.
New pitcher for Lafayette here as we begin the fifth inning will be Sean Markley. He's a six foot three, two hundred pound righty out of Westminster College, coming off his freshman season. Through just seven and a third innings this year. Eight walks, five strikeouts. An ERA of eighteen point four. And the first out he gets tonight will be the first out he gets, gets against the Blue Sox. He was the guy who started against Butler when we scored 10 runs in the first inning of that 15-10 win at the end of the season. Strike call here, one and one to Parks. So maybe a chance for a little redemption here. Yeah, that game had been planned for about a week leading up to that, that the Blue Sox were going to try some fun and interesting things, move some positions around, things like that, to stay loose. As Parks fouls this one off down the right field line. Um, in, in advance, not knowing that game would actually come down to d determine ultimately, um, you know, home field advantage for this very scenario, Butler and Lafayette in the uh, finals. And uh, Lafayette had two or three runs in the top of the first, and some people were, I think, questioning why would the Blue Sox do that. But then uh, I think the uh, – see Parks ground out to the second base here. Um, but I think that's part of what has is, is made the Blue Sox successful this year. It's the uh, team is loose. They're relaxed. They like to have fun. Um, and then when it's time to get serious like tonight, clearly they, they can do that too. Um, it's a long season for a lot of these guys, 60 games in the prospect league. But – a lot of them playing 50-some, at least before that in college. There's no real break in between the two. It's a long summer for for these guys, so it's tough to, to find ways to stay loose when you're playing six days a week. Uh, but Cody Harold and uh, Josh Forbes able to do, to do that, find ways to do that, not uh, having been in these players' positions just a few years ago. Calvin Scott strikes out. Mark really gets the first too many faces here in the fifth. Wait, try to get a line on Jabor Smith here. But the internet's not cooperating at the moment. There we go. Nope, never mind. Gonzalez two for three tonight, grounded out his last at bat, but a single in the first, an RBI, and a double. RBI in the third. Scored both of those times being on base. See strike one called here. Well, it's being weird. It won't let it. Oh, there we Finally. That's frustrating. 0-1 fouled off, and Gonzalez down 0-2. Three innings for Smith tonight. Yes. Six hits, four runs, all of which were earned. No walks, three strikeouts. And now Ray Gonzalez is down 0-2 here with two outs. And here's the pitch. Fouled off, look out, dugout. Maglione high jump to get out of the way. Really hard to, to uh, put many of these runs on the Lafayette pitchers. I mean, obviously, give up 13 runs, but the, the, just two walks, um, no errors. So the the hits are just falling in for the Blue Sox. I would say, although they have been hitting them hard. I was going to say, not to, not to, to uh, yeah. For a certain extent, you got to put it on hitters because they're yeah. giving up lasers, or the pitchers. The I pitchers, say. Yeah. yeah, the hitters are. Hitting lasers. Lafayette, I guess, is the point. I was they're not really shooting themselves in the foot in terms of making dumb mistakes on defense or walking guys. Or yeah, they really haven't had an opportunity. Not, not, a, not a very common thing to see 13 runs on 14 hits. And no defensive miscues, really. 2-2 two -two here from Markley. Oh, swing and a miss. Nice curveball. And that'll end the inning. First time tonight the Blue Sox go down in order 
They enjoy a 13-0 lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth in Kokomo. Lafayette at the plate. Trailing the Butler Blue Sox 13-0. Paven Park's first pitch lined into the gap by McAllister. That'll fall for a base hit. Scott got over quickly to cut that thing off and get it in. That's the sixth hit for the Aviators. And then Nick Schrader, second baseman, struck out his first appearance back in the at the plate back in the second inning. Schrader comes in with a 419 on base percentage. Appeared in 22 games for Lafayette this summer. 14 RBIs, 15 runs, 12 hits. Takes one outside. One of the smaller aviators, at least in height. But we've seen against Blue Sox that he can Trader put a jolt into one. Yeah, at 5'9". Tied with Logan Beeman for the shortest aviator. 1-1. One, one, never broke. Looked like a curveball. Just stayed outside. Blue Sox have just one Stefan Marconjo listed at five foot seven. Yeah, but he hit a towering homer out of here. Three one count now. In the first inning. Three run bomb. Traders had a pair on the season. Here's a three one. Fastball fouled off. It's got to be tough for Lafayette. I mean, Brent McNeely, you get all, you know, you're all hyped up playing in the championship and then just have the water turned on you. Broken bat pop up right to first base. Webb is playing first base and he almost tagged out McAllister, but it will get the out here. So Webb's into the ball game. Ferguson is. Unless he's at third base. No, he's not. He's, at, he's done for the night. Yeah, Webb and uh, McAllister both looked up there. I think they were distracted by the, uh, the broken bat of Schrader, which went flying up in the similar area. And McAllister kind of just froze rather than running back to, to first base right away, like he probably should have. Knern shield at the plate. But was able to beat uh, Webb's tag. 
1-0, line drive. That will get down in front of Murphy for a base hit. Lafayette's certainly getting hits here tonight, but uh, just haven't strung them together. And they really haven't had, in fact, seven hits, seven singles to yeah. this point. Yeah, Blue Sox has turned two double plays in the first four innings. And extra base hit-wise for Butler tonight, they have... Eight. Here's the pitch from Pavin Parks. A little bit outside to the leadoff man, Sharp. Generally a good sign when your offense has more extra base hits than the other team has hits. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just base runners in general. Parks has yet to, to walk anybody. Yep, foul ball. Or hit anybody. That's a, that's a good point because... We, t we talked about that earlier, Pat, where it was, you know, 12 nothing after two innings, and you're sitting there saying, you know, now Pavin, he's got to throw strikes and get outs and not give up free passes. And he's done exactly that. He's given up a base hit here and there, but he's not giving up those walks, which can really hurt you and allow a team to get a few on the board. That pitch looked pretty good, but it was ruled a ball. Oh, 2-1. Check swing. They will appeal to the guy in the middle of the infield who's going to say no swing 99 times out of 100. Three-man oh. three crew, I guess, is better than uh, occasional regular season game where you'll see them appeal I find to the umpire at first base for a left-handed batter. I, yeah. <laughs> Pitch high, ball four. So now the bases are loaded. We just talked about no, no walks, and then the first one of the night comes here in the fifth. But uh, it's kind of interesting in college baseball, they have the third base umpire go into the middle of the infield. So anybody who's hitting on the right side, if you ask for a check swing with guys on base, they're most likely not going to. So that fault puts more onus on the home plate umpire. Here's Corey Heffron. He did ground into a double play in the first inning and popped out to Kirkpatrick to end the third. He takes a called strike. First time that the Aviators have had a runner at third base tonight. Here's pitch. Ground ball to shortstop. Flip for one on to first. And it's a double play to end the inning again. Third double play of the night. When it's, when it, when it's going your way, it's going your way. Wow. Wow. The 6 4 3 variety this time. Yeah, that's the, the second of those three with a man on third base as well. So. That's so true, yeah. Keeping the shutout going here. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two men left stranded.
Top of the sixth here in Kokomo with Butler leading Lafayette in game one of the Prospect League Championship Series. 13 to nothing. 14 hits for Butler, seven for Lafayette, but three double plays have been their demise so far as far as offense goes. And a seven-run first inning followed by a five-run second inning has been the uh, fuel that Butler's needed to uh, get out to a nice lead here. Like to welcome in everybody watching at home, back yeah. in Butler. Yeah, wherever you may be. 1-1 one, one count to Brady Gulikowski. Here's the pitch. It's called a strike. It's been a fun debut this season for the uh, Sox Baseball Network, getting the video feed up. It's now our third trip on the road of the, the season. The, uh, it seems most other cities don't have the internet capacity that Armstrong provides us in Butler, but we do what we can. Yeah, we're doing our best. That's all you can ask, right? <laughs> Blue Sox are certainly putting forth their best effort here tonight. Golikowski will strike out. Markley, who couldn't get an out at Kelly Automotive Park, has retired the first four men he's faced here in this ball game. Although a much different situation uh, start compared to coming in in uh, a role where you're going to, you know, you're down 13. Probably a lot easier to pitch in this scenario. But he had to, he's done a good job. Here's Christian Webb's first A.B. of the night. He, like I said earlier, almost took out a Jeep. Well, he's going to hit it to center field, but that's going to hang up out there for McAllister. Two away. I don't know who, what the, who the Blue Sox player was that was guarding the, the fence out there, which this, the road is on the other side of. Um, Say it's about a 450 foot shot to right. the, the fence or but, the to the road out there. But he was all geared up to catch the ball, <laughs> and it hit the sidewalk and went 10 feet over his head. <laughs> he just turned around, looked, and watched it go out onto the street. We got a nice tour of this place, Pat. We went walked all the way around. It's such a great facility. You got uh, a sidewalk all the way. As this is oh, bare hand <laughs> snag by Cody Harold out there. On a foul ball by Damian Maglione. But, uh, yeah, so we went the whole way around the sidewalk. And you got a, you got a jungle gym with a big slide out in foul territory in right field. A nice picnic area. Pitch misses upstairs, 1-1 one, one count. Um, they have uh, nice suites. They have actually seating, stadium seating in front of them. It's just a really nice, no other way to put it, but yeah. magnificent facility. I'm looking to uh, build a similar ballpark, I believe, in Lafayette. So these uh, aviators probably uh, getting a little bit of a taste of what's to come. Yeah, it's true. Lafayette. Here's They're looking at uh, 2019 for that stadium to be open, I believe. They're building it after next season. Markley's 1-2 to Maglione. Hard hit foul over to the Sox bullpen. Jamie Swatalski couldn't glove it. <laughs> and now he's throwing his glove down in anger. That's hilarious. Five, and now he throws. <laughs> he tried, tried to, I think that's Mark Gross he tried to hit there. You can get boring down there in a the bullpen when your uh, start is throwing a shutout. Maglione pops one straight up. And catch is made by Kennedy here to end the top of the sixth. Markley's retired six in a row since coming into the ball game, but Blue Sox have a 13-0 lead as we head to the bottom half of the sixth inning.
Dougie Parks leads off the bottom of the six. Butler ahead 13 0. Parks 0 for 2. And first pitch will go off Gonzalez's mitt to the backstop. Paving at 65 pitches through five innings. Two will count here now after a curveball misses away. Fastball, low. Now it's 3-0. Rio inside, ball four. Dougie Parks draws a leadoff walk. Second one issued tonight by Pavin Parks and really didn't hit a spot there at all in that sequence. Which is uncommon for him tonight. He's hit a lot of spots. Here's the only guy who's really had much success on him. Logan Beeman, two for two with a pair of singles here tonight. His pitch, fastball, chopped to second. Maglione on to second for one. Looked like Kirkpatrick had a little bit of trouble with the transfer, so it's just going to be a fielder's choice that allows Beeman to move the first with one out. No, no real reason to throw that ball away if you don't have a good grip on yeah, it. Yeah, we've talked about that in the past, that seeing guys perhaps making throws that were unnecessary. Um, you know, get the, the shore out there at second base. No sense in trying to make a crazy throw to first. Just eat it and, you know, you've done your job there. Pitch misses away. Kennedy, game two of the Prospect League Championship Series. Shifts to Butler Saturday night, 7.05. And if you don't have any tickets for that game yet, I suggest putting in an order here in short order yeah. because uh, they're going fast. They are selling well. Visit the uh, ballerbluesocks.net. You can buy them on there. Call the office. 1-0 pitch misses. Four balled Kennedy singled in the fourth inning. Flew out to Tanner Murphy in the second. Some playoff baseball in Butler in 2014 for one game. But uh, the crowd the other day, 608 people and Every single one of them was in uh, good spirits. They were into the game. They were loud. They were supporting the team. Here's a double play opportunity. Kirkpatrick steps on the back for one on the first 6-3 double play. And the Blue Sox are rolling them up here tonight. Fourth double play in this ball game. Wow. So on to the seventh with... The Blue Sox out ahead, 
Austin Kirkpatrick ended the last inning with the uh, stepping on second base, throwing on the first for a double play. He's going to lead off this inning. He's had a good night. As you could say that about everybody, that's about everybody that's in a Blue Sox uniform. Fly ball to center field. McAllister drifting in, makes the catch for the first out here. Eight Blue Sox in a row that have been retired. Yeah, after having six in a row reach base in the first and then six out of seven in the second inning. I guess if you're going to pick one or the other, you take it how the Blue Sox have had it, you get all your hits at once, get those runs in. Or as you look at the Aviators, seven hits and still haven't got a man across. Here's the 0-1. Merconja chops it foul down the third base line. He's down 0-2. Conjure with the Blue Sox. Big home run, three-run homer. The first inning to put him up 7-0. He RBIs on that one. Slow curveball grounded to third. Parks has it. The throw across will retire Merconja for the second out. Bringing up Tanner Murphy. Bat for the fifth time tonight. He's one for three to this point. Walked and scored in the first, doubled in the first as well. <laughs> then grounded out the first in the second, and 5-3 uh, put out in the fourth. Alex Stobert, probable for the next game on Saturday. Not sure who Lafayette will throw, but we have a suspicion it might be De Brad Depperman. There's a line drive over the head of... An outstretched sharp in the center field, and that ends Markley's streak at eight, a two-out single here. Yeah, it seems a lot of the discussion we've had, the uh, a lot of strategizing. Strategery. Uh, strategery, that's right, um, goes into these games, but it, it almost would appear that you would want your, your best starting pitcher to go uh, in game number two. Obviously, you'd either be facing elimination or trying to close it out. And so if it is, in fact, Depperman, that's Lafayette would have their best pitcher who set the uh, all-time prospect league strikeout record with 108 this year. Shattered it, in fact. Is it 20 more than the second-place guy who played way back in 2009. Foul ball by Paven Parks. He's at 1-1 count. Looking to break an 0-4 here tonight and get on base and make it a complete 9. He's done the job on the hill tonight. There's a ground ball to second. Pavin's going to be frustrated as he grounds out 4-3 here, but he can't be too upset because it's Butler 13 and Lafayette nothing as we head to the seventh inning. We'll let you listen to Take Me Out to the Ball Game here. It's stretch time in Kokomo. Trey Brittis is going to lead off the bottom of the seventh with Butler ahead 13 nothing. Pavement Parks number 13 on the hill for Blue Sox. Gets a called strike here. 
15 hits for Butler, seven for Lafayette. We're grounded into four double plays here tonight. Swing and a miss way behind the fastball. And here's the 0-2. Ooh, a bit low. Pavin, of course, two-way player for the Blue Sox, but uh, Kent State this fall. Be interesting to see where he goes there. This ball smoked into the gap. That's going to get down and hit off the wall. Now it gets past Merconja. Around second and heading for third is Brittis, and he'll be there with a stand-up triple. You know, Marconja, I think, got a little too close to that one. Probably hit the ball, hit the wall a little harder than he expected. It took a really good bounce off of that padded wall out there. Not something you're used to seeing in Butler. With the, not that quite a chain link fence, but it was absorbed the blow a little better than that did. That, that bounced like it was uh, off a hockey board. Yeah, and with the turf, fast turf here in Kokomo, it, uh, it took off. Good thing Calvin was close to get that ball in, or that would have been an inside the park home run. Easily. He called strike here to McAllister, or actually swinging strike, I beg your pardon. But um, as I said about Pavin, he uh, has a chance probably to do both at Kent State, but uh, the way he pitches, man, I could see him definitely being a guy that they could use, whether it be in a starter's role or out of the bullpen, because we've seen him do both effectively here this year. 1-1 one, one count, pitches a called strike. McAllister from Longwood University, a junior from Philadelphia, swings and misses for strike three, one away here in the bottom of the seventh. Fourth strikeout for Pavin Parks. Now it's Schrader's turn. 0 for 2 tonight. He'll chop to second base. Maglione will throw. Him out, and a run will come in to score. Lafayette is on the board on an RBA ground out. It's now 13 to one, Butler. Yeah, Maglione there. Ball bounced up to him, and he thought for a second about throwing home, trying to preserve the shutout, but at this point, you want to get that shore out. Runs aren't hurting all that much. No, that just puts a tiny dent into the lead. And he said that out was worth way more than trying to yeah. throw home and maybe throwing one over his head or not getting him. But Knern Shield is one for two. He's in a one-one count here with Parks. Two outs in the in the seventh. Here's the pitch. One-one. Whoa! Way wide. Blue Sox did have an above average pitching staff this year, just two and one in shutouts, so just two shutouts all year, but they're hitting the way that they do. You know, not really that big of a deal. Yeah, Stobert had a shutout and Bucci had a shutout for Butler this year. Complete games. Three one count here. Pitch is in there for a strike. Butler had the uh, second best road record in the league this year, 17 and 13. Aviators actually led the league by far in terms of home record. Went 24 and 6 at Loeb Stadium, but are, of course, somewhat home in Kokomo tonight. So. Definitely a lot closer to them, but a strikeout here to end it. Called strike three. One run comes in on one hit. No errors and no one left. Through seven, Butler 13 and Lafayette one.
Ready to go here. Top of the eighth. Calvin Scott at the plate against Sean Markley. Three scoreless innings since coming in in the fifth. Oof. That curveball disappears on you there. And Scott swings through it for the first strike. If he hangs one of those, it's not going to be pretty. Here's the 0-1. He tries it again and dips below the knees. I have a feeling in that game last Saturday, he was hanging a few of those curveballs because he wasn't fooling anybody in that game. One, two, inside on a breaker. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Hard hit grounder past Cody Harold. Nobody warming in the Blue Sox bullpen, so I'd imagine Pavin will probably come out for the eighth. Under 100 With pitches. Games on Saturday and Sunday. Probably not going to see another appearance this summer. So There was one of those hanging curveballs I was talking about. Scott just <laughs> missed it. He hit it hard, but foul. Certainly wanna, would not want to overthrow Parks, but less than 100 pitches in a game like this where he's got a just one run allowed. You want to save your bullpen when you can. He's only faced six over the minimum here tonight. He allowed eight hits. Oh, nice curveball in there for swinging strike three for Scott. And that's going to be the first out here in the eighth. Ray Gonzalez will be up next. Here's the pitch. Hit right back to and he makes the catch on the line. The old line out one for the second out. I bet, uh, it's hard to say this now, but I, I'm, I'm betting that McNeil probably wishes he would have went to Markley as the second pitcher out of the bullpen, the way he's performed here in this game. But like I said, it's a different situation. He would have been coming in in a 7-0 uh, game at that time, but... Uh, 13 nothing game. He's come in and just carved up here. He's already ahead of Gulakowski 0-2, and here's the pitch. Ground ball off of the glove of Markley. Diving attempt by Schrader, but that gets by both of them, and it'll be a single for Brady Gulakowski. Yeah, Schrader, they're diving to stop the ball from going into the outfield. Doesn't, made a good play to stop it, but had no chance of Getting Gula Cows get first, so it didn't really matter all that much. Now Christian Webb's turn. He's looking for his first hit of the night. He came in for Ferguson in the fourth inning. He's going to hit it to left field. It's going to hang up out there for Beeman. That puts a cap on the top of the eighth. We'll go to the bottom half with Butler ahead 13 to 1.
Top of the order due up for Lafayette here in the eighth. Yeah. Means Brian Sharp's coming to the plate. Sharp from Missouri. Well, fouling off his foot. Ouch. That's a rough way to start it. Seen that a few times in this postseason, including uh, Dan Ward from West Virginia ended up injuring his foot so bad that he couldn't play in game two until he pinch hit, of course, in the ninth and smashed one off the fence at about, I, I think it traveled at an exit velocity of 200 mile an hour. <laughs> Still working on fixing that fence, hole in the fence. Or? But thankfully, his run was stranded at third by Wyatt Doherty, and the Blue Sox got out of Dodge with a 6-5 win. That's why we're here tonight, leading 13-1 to in the bottom of the eighth inning. Just after 9 o'clock. Here's the pitch. That's a called strike three for the first out. Nice pitch from Pavin. Just brought that curveball in and deposited it right at the knees. And he, yeah, as you mentioned, just about two hours into this ball game, started at 7:05 in Indiana, which is in fact on the uh, in the Eastern Times, huh? Pinch hitter here, Noah McGowan. Fairly quick ball game for seeing 13 runs scored. That's what happens when you score them all in one inning or two innings. Yeah. Blue Sox put up seven in the first, five in the second, one in the third, and been zeros since. Lafayette's one run came in the bottom of the seventh. Foul ball. Evens count of one apiece with Noah McGowan from Ohio State, a junior native of Houston, Texas, getting an opportunity here for placing Corey Heffron, who grounded into two double plays tonight. McGowan's been here for about half the season, 23 games he's appeared in. Check swing, pitch to the backstop. Ray upset with himself. Ray is such a solid catcher, though. He's uh, really good at throwing runners out. Always seems to find the base. And good job, good pitch framer. We really, I don't want to brag too much on these guys, but we really have some of the best catchers in the league. Christian Webb does a great job. Gulikowski, when he was back there, was great. Bolton, we talked about him on Monday night, how well he does blocking pitches, getting out in front of balls. Oh, my, that one comes up and hits McGowan in the head. Definitely just lost the handle on one there. Yeah, that was something that the Blue Sox had four catchers even going back to um, before Cody had been Harold Harold had been hired. Um, when I, Jason Radwan was still picking the uh, the roster, he had four, four catchers earlier, which is rare. Um, Usually you would expect one or one or two of them even to, to get hurt um, before the season starts. That's what it seems like it's been the past few years, but all four have stayed on. They've made it through the whole summer, in, too. Yeah, in, yeah, in some capacity or another. Up and into Dougie Parks here. Obviously, Gulikowski and Webb both uh, playing in the field tonight, too. But. Foul ball. That's another thing. Uh, Gulikowski got an opportunity to play third base this summer, some place he played in high school. Webb getting a chance at first base. He can go back to Cal U with a little bit more uh, in his repertoire defensively. Here's the 1-1. To be a bit inside. Parks 0 for 2 did walk. In the sixth, with here's the pitch from Parks. It's going to be hit foul by Dougie Parks over towards the slide. A little bit of everything for people here. In in Lafayette, I know they think they have a uh, an amusement park near the stadium. There's a ground ball to shortstop. On the second for one, on to first. Make it five double plays that the Aviators have hit into here tonight. Wow. Kirkpatrick to Maglione to Webb. 6-4-3. 
to end the inning. And now we're on to the ninth with Butler ahead 13 to one. Damon Maglione leads off here in the ninth against Markley. First pitch is a curveball in there for a strike. 12 6 action on that curveball. This drops right through the zone. The bullpen has been vacated, so I believe here comes a ball into the stands. Ooh, nearly hit a guy in the face. Thankfully, he shielded himself. And O2 on Damian Maglione. Maglin pops it up on the infield. Markley makes the catch for the first out in the top of the ninth. It's kind of the just another downside of the way that this game has gone for Lafayette. They fall behind early, and as you said, Markley's done a good job here. Now four and a third innings pitched, but uh, the other side of that coin is that he's uh, probably not going to be available for Saturday night's game. No, he's you know, he's one of the few guys here that has shown he can. Get Sox batters out. Well, ground ball to shortstop. Sharp will throw to Kennedy two away. Yeah, he he's thrown uh, now 50 pitches on the night. So it's going to be hard for him to come back in two days. You look at it as far as the aviators are concerned. Uh, you got Depperman going on Saturday. Most likely, I would say it would be hard to believe that somebody else will be pitching for them and if that's the case he's your horse you're going to try to ride him as long as possible and and see where it goes on the other hand Butler's going to be throwing Alex Stobert who has pitched in really big games in his high school career helping Butler win a or knock win a state championship and there's a line drive fair ball by Marconja down the left field line and he's headed around first for second and he's going to get there with a stand-up double. That's just the third hit by a Blue Sox player off of Markley. Conjures third in the night, second double. Been on base four times. Four RBIs. Can't ask for much more out of your nine hitter. It's not something that, uh, you know, if you look at the numbers, you see kind of the, the – Guys in the middle of the lineup for uh, Lafayette and Parks, Beeman, and Kennedy. Three of the better hitters you're going to see on one team in the league. But the Blue Sox maybe don't match them with their top hitters, but just consistent throughout the lineup. Um, 
just relentless, as we saw in the first two innings there. Curveball outside, 2-0 and to Tanner Murphy. You said they're seven through nine hitters start out, seven for seven. Pavin's on deck. Fastball swing through by Murphy. Pavin, I guarantee, he wants to get to bat again tonight. <laughs> 0 for 5, he wants that hit. He wants, you know. Yeah, I'm sure he is frustrated. Certainly, you can excuse him for, uh, based on his pitching performance this evening. Uh, well, that ball's hit well. And it is going over the head of the right fielder, Brittis, all the way to the wall. In the score will be Marconja, stopping in second with a stand up double. It is Murphy, and it's now Butler 14, Lafayette 1. And now Pavin will get that chance to hit here. They're playing Murphy surprisingly shallow. And uh, Brittis, no chance out there. Right field, he leaped for it, but couldn't get to it. Yeah, over his head, bounce around there out the 369 side and right center. Pavin swings through the first curve ball he sees. If he doesn't get a hit here, it's not the end of the world because <laughs> he pitched a fine ball game here tonight. Here's the 0-1. Curveball well outside. Started out in the other batter's box and barely made it to the chalk. Here's the 1-1. Curveball high. Here's the 2-1. High as well. Imagine Pavin's going to be swinging away here at 3 1. What do you think? <laughs> 3 1. Yep, he was taking a nice hack, but he fouls it out of the stadium. Well, Pat, if things go accordingly in the ninth, looks like we'll get out of here by 10 o'clock, which means we'll probably get back to. Uh, Butler around 7 a.m., I would say, 6 or 7 a.m. Ball fouled off again by Parks. Off day tomorrow for travel day. Lafayette will be leaving uh, tomorrow morning to make their way to Butler and spend the night at the day's in. Yeah, they're leaving here about noon, so they'll, they'll get in about 8 o'clock tomorrow night, get to their rooms, get some rest, and then they're uh, set for game two Saturday. Pitch outside, ball four, and Parks becomes the ninth Blue Sox to reach here tonight. And he does not, he ends his batting night on a positive note. Gives Calvin Scott another chance here. First run for Butler since the third inning. But that's kind of burying the lead here. <laughs> it's the first, yeah, the first walk for uh, Markley there. Yeah, as you mentioned, it's a uh, it's an eight and a half hour bus ride that uh, is a lot easier to uh, stomach whenever you came out in the first inning and score seven runs. And then follow it up and with then, a five spot. Yeah. Here's the pitch, curveball drops in there for a called strike, and it's one and two on Calvin Scott. He struck out the last two times he's been up, both against Markley. And now Bouncer will allow Murphy to move up. Park stays put. Well, pitch. It's more of a jog for Tanner to get the third there. Two, two, two outs. In the top of the ninth, here's the pitch. Scott, hard hit ball past Cody Harold, lifts his leg, gets it out of the way. No bruises on that one. I had to ask. I forgot to ask Cody when Bolton hit him. He had the the other night. He hit the ball off his foot, and he was uh, laying there injured. Cody tried to roll the ball in. He rolled it right over top of his injured foot. Pitch outside. Wow. Oh, a knuckleball. 
the way that thing moved. Another deep count here for uh, Markley. Parks is his first walk of the night, and now we see a full count. So that means that the runners will, well, maybe, I don't know. They'll at least be jogging, I would imagine, with two outs. Swing and a miss, strike three. And then it'll end the inning. But the Blue Sox do get a run here on two hits. No errors and leave two men on. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Butler 14, Lafayette 1. Last chance for Lafayette here tonight. Bottom of the ninth. 14 to 1. Butler leads it. They have 18 hits here tonight. While Lafayette has eight. Logan Beeman takes a fastball low from Paven Parks, trying to finish a complete game out here. And save the bullpen for Saturday. A little flare right to Maglione. He's got it one away here in the ninth. Sox with just four. Um, complete games on the season. And uh, heck of a time for a fifth one. Yeah, really. Um. Just, I mean, you, you get those double plays. Certainly you don't expect to get five in a game. Um, but just, just absolute all-around domination tonight with the bats. You know, they went quiet over the latter half of the game, but you're not going to be scoring seven runs every inning so you know with that kind of a lead showed the offense they showed the defense no errors no stupid throws no major misplays of balls um, pretty academic 1-0 count now 2-0 I beg your pardon to um, Evan Kennedy one of those double play victims tonight foul ball the next game, 7.05 Saturday. We get two more outs here. We'll have an opportunity to. Don't even say it. All right. <laughs> Swing and a miss. 2-2 two -two now. <laughs> I'm not superstitious, but just be there. Yes. It's going to be a. Chance to make history. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. Kelly Automotive Park is going to be the place to be on Saturday night. There's a strikeout for Kennedy. Two down in the ninth, and the last hope is Tr Trey Brittis, who did trip one score his last time up. The lone run for Lafayette to this point. Pitch is in there for a strike. 
Tonight's attendance, 175. Most of them are not going to be going home happy here. Swing and a miss. It's 0-2. And the Aviators are down to their final strike here tonight. Park's ready to go. Here's the pitch. A little check swing roller up the first baseline. That'll be a foul ball. Here's the 0-2 again. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And that'll do it. A complete game from Paven Parks. A big night from the bats early on. And that equals a 14-1 victory in game one of the Prospect League Championship Series for the Blue Sox here tonight. How about it? I'm trying to think of something you could do better. I... I really, I got nothing. Parks tonight, complete game, nine innings, eight hits. Defense behind him, turned five double plays. Parks with just two walks, eight strikeouts, which is not, you know, on the season, he, th those two numbers were a little closer together. A lot of strikeouts tonight, including one to end the ball game. 33 batters faced, five over the minimum. A complete game, one run performance. Unbelievable game tonight from, from Butler. You get game one of the championship series. The last two games we had in Beckley were uh, against <laughs> West Virginia yeah. in Beckley and up at Kelly Automotive Park were nail biters. And this is this yeah, feels it's, good. It's close as could be. You got a guy <laughs> standing 90 feet away. And... Uh, all 600 people at the park ready to have a heart attack and go from that to, to this. I think maybe Butler realized they don't want to do that again. I, I don't even know. You could give the you could give the player of the game to four different guys tonight. It's uh, That's true. I mean, we, if we had an on-field mic and I was heading down there tonight, it'd be hard to pick. Just stand I mean, out there and interview the whole team. Yeah, really. One through nine here tonight. Every guy reached base. Everybody but uh, Christian Weapon only had two opportunities. Yeah, to he on base. came in late. Yeah. Um, Magley owned three hits, that double, two run double in the first inning. You know, when the game is in the balance, Blue Sox just up 2 nothing at that point. That pushed them, you know, to 4 nothing, And then two batters later with Stefan Marconja with a, with a rocket over the left field fence. That was the real kill shot. Yeah. That made it 7 nothing. And yeah, you think four nothing. You got a four nothing lead. There's a, you know, you got a lot of time to come back if you're the Aviators. Seven runs. That's a little different story. Yeah. And then in the second inning, Scott leads off with a double. Gonzalez with an RBI double. Golikowski with an RBI double. Then Maglione RBI single. RBI double Kirkpatrick. RBI double Merconja. It's just like, oh man, that was two of the best innings that you could have. We had all season. I think the only one better was the 10 run inning in, in uh, uh, the last game of the season. Yeah. But at this time of year, critical time like this, you know, you're down to the final days of the season and come out and score 12 runs in the first two innings. You couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, not to mention you got, you know, Ben Carew out of the lineup with an injury. You got um, James Meeker out of the lineup with a, for his ejection the other night. But it's. Uh, and you still go out there and score all those runs. It's you know this this team is is really come together. You know is, is we don't we said this is only our third trip on the uh, to an away series on the the season, but you can tell you can recognize instantly how well this team is bonded. Um, they're all very close to one another. Just a bunch of bro brothers fighting and bickering. You know the whole way on the bus ride, and then but when they show up, they're they're all business. They are all business, and they were superb tonight. No, no other, they run out of adjectives to uh, describe this game. A cornucopia of runs tonight. Yes. And uh, it ends in a 14-1 win. In the time of the game tonight, two hours and 23 minutes. We'll see if we got a probable for Lafayette in the final box score here before we sign off. We know Alex Stobert will get the ball on Saturday in Butler. 
And it looks like Beeman is the probable for Lafayette. So that should be a fun game there Saturday. But for tonight, it was all Butler. And we'll leave Kokomo Municipal Stadium ahead 1-0 in a best of three series. And now we'll uh, get back on the bus, watch some movies. And next thing you know, the sun will be up and we'll be back in Butler, Pennsylvania. But for everybody who listened here tonight, we appreciate it. And we'll be right back with you again Saturday, 7.05, first pitch. I'll have Joel Norman and uh, Kellen Gursky with me. Tonight I had Patrick Reddick. This will be his final broadcast of the year. and uh, It's great to have him come with us on these trips. I know you got a lot of work ahead of you the next couple of days before we play ball on Saturday. But so anything you want to say tonight before you, uh, we head for the bus? Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Hope to see everybody at uh, at the ballpark on Saturday. And as do I. It's uh, we hope to see that place back to the back to the gills and as loud as possible as we get ready for game two. Well, I appreciate everybody listening. As I said, uh, this is uh, fun to do, and this has been one of the most fun summers that I've had. And looking forward to last part of the season here but thanks we'll uh, talk to you again on Saturday last time final score here tonight Butler 14 Lafayette 1 Butler has a 1-0 series lead we'll talk to you again on Saturday have a great couple of days we'll see you then <laughs>